Judges chapter number 16, beginning with verse number 21. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass and he did grind in the prison house. We want to talk to you today about the threefold effect of sin. In this particular verse is contained the entire scope of the effects of sin. And it, this is not an isolated situation because it is so in every case. And I guarantee you that you will not be the lone exception. I want to point out uh, three aspects of this particular verse. This passage has reference to Samson and how he toyed with sin until it brought him to his final demise and destruction. After he had devised the secret that was between him and God, the enemy had full access to him. And I want you to notice these three major situation that the devil employed in the destruction of Samson and so it will be or shall be in the case of each individual who will dare to toy with sin. The first thing they did was put out his eyes. They blinded him. They brought him down to Gaza and bound him. Then he was bound and finally, they made him grind in the prison house. So we want to talk about the blinding, the binding, and the grinding effect of sin. And they want, this is a graphic picture of what it's all about. And if those in sin that have gone back to sin don't know it, sooner or later they will. This is without exception. And may God open our eyes today. All right. We would like to deal with him in the sequence that we read them. All right. He put out his eyes. Put out his eyes. I'm sure that as you observe. Now this has reference uh, primarily to those who have seen, who have known God, who have had a clear vision and now are in a situation. Now, there's a difference. There's a difference. The latter darkness is greater than the native darkness. All right. The very first thing that happens to an individual that goes back to sin or even toys with it or even plays with it or even plays cat and mouse with it. And I know this, not only from the scripture, but from uh, 50 years of observation. Now, of course, we know that there are those who are blinded and don't realize it themselves. But the effects of it is manifest. All right. They took him. They put out his eyes. They blinded him. Dear one, let me tell you something. 
of all of the physical states that a person might imagine themselves, I think the worst of all is to be blind. Living in a world of, of object darkness, having to feel your way groping for the walls, unable to discern clear objects before you. Listen, I want to awaken you this morning. There are a crop of people that we are dealing with. I want to awaken you that you might know that we are not dealing with ordinary situations. And I trust God you are not naive enough to think that it, uh, you can just uh, turn a switch and it's like it was. Sin blinds. It blinds everybody. You talk with it. Absolutely everybody. You might have a mental ascent, but your perception is gone. The first thing the devil did was make him oblivious to what was around him. They knew if they blinded him, his strength would be to no avail. Because he what? He couldn't see his enemies. He couldn't recognize his enemies. He just soon to destroy his friend as his enemy because he don't he can't discern the difference. In the book of Revelation, chapter three, chapter three, verse number fourteen. Read. And unto the angel of the church of Laodicea. Unto the angel of the church of Laodicea. Right. These things. Write these things. Saith the Amen. Saith the Amen. The faithful and true witness. The faithful and true witness. The beginning of the creation of God. The beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works. I know thy works. Listen to me this morning, please. I know your works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. Thou art neither cold nor hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, be, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out. Of I my will mouth. spew thee out of my mouth. Go on. Because thou sayest, because thou sayest, I am rich. I am rich, and increased with goods, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art. And rich. you don't know why? Because you can't see. You don't know your plight because you can't see it. Dear one, don't you know the most difficult things in the world is trying to deal with someone who don't see their plight. That's tough. It will drive you to despair. You can get on your knees. You can read scripture. You can read excerpts from commentaries. But if a person cannot perceive it, all that you do is null and void. Please listen this morning. We have a crop of that sort of people on hand whose spiritual perception has been voided. Their spiritual eyes have been plucked out. Now here, that it is impossible for those who do not have sharp discernment to deal with this generation. That's why I'm not going to have you trying to deal with them. Of course, because you have got to have absolute discernment. Why? Number one, the Bible speaks about two kinds of blindness. And they have to be dealt with on their own merits. All right? It speaks about a kind of blindness that an application of I self can correct. There's a remedial uh, thing for those who have visit or blind and cannot see afar off. That means they have a kind of blindness, but it's not total blindness. Their vision has been impaired 
to the extent they cannot discern what they should discern, but the blindness is not total. You understand? So then, in those cases, we endeavors to apply the remedy. We labor trying to get you to see what you have become oblivious to. But then there is a kind of blindness that there is no remedy. There's a total blindness. Y'all pray, my friends. Now we're going off into something here, surely. Now, if you if you are if you are a surface dweller, you won't get it. Because in this day and time, what we're dealing with is too much for the mediocre. All right. There's a kind of blindness. Where the very eye sockets have been plucked out. The very sense of sight is there no longer. So I say I would do nothing for that kind. And I want to read you an instance here, and God help us. If you allow yourself to get in this predicament, whoa, my God, they have mercy on your soul. It can happen to any of you. Because all of these references were made to saints. In fact, the church of God. Read a little more of that. Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods. You say that I am rich and increased with goods. And have need of nothing. Have need of nothing. And knowest not. Knowest not. That thou art wretched. Wretched. And miserable. Miserable. And poor. Poor. And blind. Blind. And naked. Church of God, people, you have allowed yourself to get in a mess here. And your spiritual uh, temperature has so depreciated that you cannot perceive you blind. Right in the church of God congregation, blind. You know service to yourself, to the church, and nobody else, you're blind. You cannot see what you need to see. If you had a vision, you would know you're a predicament. You would sense where you are, but you're blind, so there's no need. I'm going to make a recommendation. Now, if you will willingly apply the eye salve, there's a possibility that your vision might, uh, you might recoup it somehow and, 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 and see again. Under the best case scenario. But now, we don't know whether, uh, but now, you got to apply it yourself. You might be enjoying your blindness, but then you're not responsible for what you don't see, you think. All right. You're blind. You're naked. And you, you can't see it. I know nothing more despairing than to find a person who's actually blind and naked. These religious people who are blind and naked and don't realize that they're still praising God and talking religious talk and their vision is totally impaired if not altogether gone. We have a whole generation of church people who have gotten themselves in that predicament. But I'm going to show you something. How Jesus dealt with this caliber of person and it's so serious. Matthew chapter 15, verse number 13. If you'll read it, please. My God have mercy upon us here. But he answered and said. But he answered and said. Every plant. Every plant which my my heavenly father father hath not planted planted, shall shall be rooted up. Let them alone. Let them alone. They be, they be blind, leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the Don't blind. bother them. There is no need of bothering them. They won't see it anyway. I've talked with them. I've preached. I've had personal counsel. But they don't see it. They're blind. They're blind in their own eyes. So, my God have mercy. Well, Lord, let us put some eyes there. Leave them alone. I say it won't help those people. Well, Lord, let's have an all-night council. They have no sense of sight. So, well, let us wave red in their face. Wave any color you want to. They have no sense of sight. They won't perceive it. Let me read it from the Greek Bible. Read it from wherever you will. They have fooled around and got blind. Blind to what? Number one, they're blind to the consequences of their behavior. They ain't no need to tell them about hell. They can't see it no more. 
They don't need to tell them about the end of sin and what's going to eventually happen and you're going to pay for it and you're going to reap what you sow. They can't see that anymore. So they have no need to be talking to them. Let them alone. They're blind. Can you imagine a loving Savior who came to earth to save people and said, leave them alone? The people have gotten themselves in a predicament that God said, leave them alone! That's why many people in preaching around the church of God, I left alone. I've left alone. I have left alone. What? Because I can sense. See, to keep poking a, with a blind person will bring provocation to your own spirit. Amen. See, you are trying to incite them to the impossible. You're just going to provoke them. And they're going to start throwing back at you. Because they don't see it and you're going to try to make them see it. Y'all better pray. And let me tell you this, children. Don't get provoked. Say, you blind as a bat. Well, if they don't see it, if they have no, they're not going to see it when you say it. All they're going to do is get madder. Amen. So they have no need to tell them you blind as a bat because you tell them now you can't see. So why do you think they're going to see it if you tell them? Or you, 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 you blind as a bat. Well, I might have said it out of provocation of my own spirit. I'm not saying because I, I'm telling you you're blind. So do I think you're going to see it because I said it? So why, if you're blind, then why am I trying to show it to you? Leave you alone. There comes a time. There comes a time. There comes a time. Blind to the consequences. You know what? That's why I'm saved today. What? I can always sense the consequences. Wherever I was, whatever state, whatever age, I always kept the consequences of my behavior. I knew if I do it and enjoy it, but that's not the end of it. I can see that. I can recognize it. I might delight. I might get a thrill, but that's not the end of it. I can sense there's something at the end of it. I can eat the grains of corn, but I'm headed to the slaughter pen. Sadly. But you say, honey, don't you see? You're destroying yourself. Don't you see? You're messing up your life. Don't, no, they don't see. <laughs> honey, can't you see it? It's plain as the nose on your face. I don't care how plain it is. They don't see it. Excuse me. <coughs> honey, it looks like you could see it. It's destroying you. Your way of life, that stuff is destroying you. Your way of life is destroying you. Honey, you got to reap that. You got to pay for it. You got to pay great dividends. Don't you see it? Listen, listen, listen. Will you please listen? Those people who were blind would not regard it as the total backsliders. They were just lukewarm. How many times have my heart been made to bleed when people get lukewarm and they can't see? You try to tell them, honey, you destroy yourself. Can't you see that she, he just destroyed himself doing that and she just destroyed herself? Can't you see what's going to happen? You see what happened to them? You can't see it. I can't make you see it. coming from New Jersey in 1987 maybe my son back was driving the car driving the van and usually about that time of year there's a change of temperature and there's a rain almost on that particular date and many of us have almost met tragic ends because of it twirled around the street and there were a little curve there near the Delaware water gap perhaps and so I was trying to sleep. I was tired. And I noticed the car doing that. Now, I told his son. I said, let me have it. I pull over. Pull over. Pull over. Pull over. And so we pulled over. And in that curve, just about 100 yards away, there was a curve. And those people who disregarded this change because it was a gradual change. And the temperature was just about maybe 31 degrees, just at a freezing point. And they just kept on. They just totally disregarded it. And about five cars in rapid succession, it, going in that curve, lost control, turn over, all them. We were running up there trying to get people out of cars, and, and I said, I said no, he lost it. I looked, son, he lost it. I saw the tail end trying to catch up with the front end. I said, he lost it. But now it seems that those people would have seen those other cars and slowed down. But they thought, I guess I'm going to make the curve despite. 
And of course, we saw the consequences of all those. Well, it seemed that some of you always see. We give you illustrations. We point out particular instances where we all but cram it down your throats. But I guess everybody think they will be the lone exception. Let them alone. In my counsel, in my dealing with individuals, I have learned this. When I sense that you've lost your perception, I won't bother you. Not because I think you're all right, but I just because I know you're not going to see it, so I ain't going to be going on and, and, and embedded in my spirit. But Hampton, I said, that thing is taking you under. That thing is taking you under. I don't see nothing wrong with that. So and so doing it. So and so doing it. You're blind. The very fact you would make a reference to somebody else when I'm trying to instruct you or coming back at me. Your concern should be about your plight. If you had any vision, you, you, your concern would be about you, not trying to point out somebody who's doing worse than you. That's not going to justify your plight. That's not going to give you a safe landing. But when you lose your vision, that will be your attitude. That will be your attitude. See, now, see, it's sad because you can't get to a person who can't see. When in 1991, in the Iraqi confrontation there, uh, one of the diplomats was discussing with a person of high rank about Hussein. And they said, listen, the man going to lose his country, going to lose his people, he's going to have his, his country torn up. Say, why don't you make him aware of that? He said, well, wait a minute. You must remember, we're dealing with a man who has no reason. We're dealing with a man who has no vision. Telling him his country might go up and smoke in the morning means nothing to him. He can't see it. He cannot see the consequences of it. So trying to tell him the dire effect of what will happen if he continues that will mean nothing to him. He can't see it. He's not going to change. He's not going to back up what? Even if he hears the war planes coming, you can't, he, you can't make him see it. He'll be there, he'll roast. He said, the poor man has lost his sense of perception. He cannot see and reason will not help him. That's the first thing the devil does, throw your reasoning off. You've, you've dealt with backsliders. You've talked to hundreds of them. And you are appalled. But you know you saw it one time. You know you saw it. You, talk, you preached about hell and, and you talk about the bondage of sin and, and you saw the consequences. You saw, you told others about it, you know. That don't mean a thing to them now, but they're blind now. When they were telling others about it, they saw it, but they don't see it anymore. Many of you who are so enlightened this morning, you think it's impossible that you could ever get in a state where you don't see what you see now, but don't you know better than that? Things that you cannot go to sleep on can become so dim to you that we can't even make you sense it, the wrong of it. One time you couldn't sleep over it. Dear one, there's a, there's a dangerous blindness that we're dealing with today. And I trust God, those of you who try to be altar workers and, and missionaries and all this kind of thing, you better know what you're dealing with. You can get your own spirit off trying to deal with a blind person. You'll get provoked because they can't see it. Can't you see it, man? Then, then you'll get blind. You better be careful. You better be careful. When you sense blindness, you better leave it alone like Jesus did. What did Jesus say? Let them alone. Go on. If the, they're blind, leaders of the blind, they're not going to see it, so that you're, you're wasting your time. You are putting your own spirit in jeopardy. If the blind leave the blind, everybody's going to fall in the ditch. Trying to show something to someone who has no vision. In Romans 1.18. God help us this morning. I trust God that 
we can apply some eye salve this morning. If it's any guys who got any vision at all, that somehow we can restore it this morning. God help us. Read. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all what? Ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world clearly seen being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead. So that they are without excuse because that when they knew God, when they saw God, when that vision was clear, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was dark, and they knew God. They didn't appreciate it. They didn't appreciate that clarity of vision, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Now they're grouping for the wall. Now the thing that they used to shout of, I don't see it. And get arrogant about it. You get your foolish heart darkened and you won't even be bothered. You won't be troubled anymore. The blinding, the blinding effect of sin. The blinding. And next, the Bible said they... The Bible said that they, they bound him. They bound him. Before, before, they couldn't bind him. Before, they couldn't bind him. Turn to the book of 2 Peter. Chapter 2. I want to show you something, children. Now, we, we back to these backslides and those who are verging on it. I want to show you something. Read. Read, read loud and clear. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity. When they speak great swelling words of vanity. They allure through the lust of the flesh. They allure through the lust of the flesh. Through much wantonness. Through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped. Those that were clean escaped. They allure you and say, come on out here. You can, you can boogie out here. Come on out here, you can party. Come on out here, you can twist. Come on out here, you can put three holes in you. Come on out here, and maybe you put your tight pants on. Come on out here. They allure you through the lust of the flesh. They allure you. Come on out here, you can go to the prom and wear your thing and go after the prom, have you after the prom party. Come on out here, you can go down, you can go down the street swinging your hand with your fella and go on a weekend cruise. They allure you. Those people down there, they got you, they, they, they brainwash you. Come on out here. Come on out here and cut two feet off your dress tail. Come on out here. I got, I got, I got four women. I got two boyfriends. I got a, one for the week and one for the weekend. Come on out here. Oh, yes. And you are naive enough to stand up and let the devil tell you all that stuff and, be, and, and impress you and in many cases succumb to it. Three. They, they are vain words. They speak great swelling words of vanity. I'm going to show you your plight this morning and may God have mercy. They will do what? Allure. Through the lust of the flesh. Through much wantonness. Those who were clean escaped. Go on. Who promised them liberty? Promised them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption. They themselves are the servants of corruption. For a whom a man is overcome. Whom a man is overcome. The same is he brought in bondage. They bound him. 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 Call your little grandson, Sister Hampton. Call him. Tell him come here. Say, come here. Call him, honey. TJ, would you come here, please? Come here, TJ. 
committee day. Lord have mercy. That's what your children are saying, Mama, I want to come. I want to come, but I can't come, Mama. And you've been switching around and going out to the mall every day. And your children say, I can't come. I want to come, Mama, but I can't come. I don't want to be like this, Mama. I'm tired of having illicit sex. I'm tired of getting high. I'm tired of shacking. I want to come, Mama, but I can't. They're crying all night long. They party, but then they're crying the rest of the night. She's like, honey, why don't you come? Mama, I want to come, but I can't come. I'm bound. I can't come, Granny. I can't come. I want to come, Granny. I love you, but I can't come. I'm bound. They call it liberty, but they're bound. How many times have I ever called from down south? I want to come to your church. I want to come to church, Daddy. And, and my, sister, my daughter might say, Why don't you come out of I'm bound. That was not included in the deal. Amen. You got people sitting around 15, 25, 30 years, bound as they can be. Amen. Yes, you're praying. Yes, you're crying. Yes, you're witnessing to them. Loose him. If you got power, maybe you can lose some of yours. How many times have some of you all who have played the fool at some time and you have decided, I'm going to get up in the morning, I'm going to go to church, I'm going to call Brother Hampton, I'm going to call Brother so-and-so, and I'm going to get saved. We had a classic example of one who knew this gospel and lived as much as any of you and came back here and said, I want to come back to God. I want to get baptized. I baptized that night. And the next day after trying to fast and trying to pray, Whatever, I can't make it. I'm bound. It's hard. I'm bound. Well, why don't you get loose? It ain't that simple. I want to. I won't get baptized. I go through the whole thing. Well, come on, tell us. I, I, I won't do, but I can't. But you're right here 12 or 13 years and living child and everything else. I know it. And why don't you come on back? You said better here. You said miserable. I won't do, but I can't. Then the fun's over. Amen. Then the fun's over. <coughs> Won't you sense that this world is destroying you? When you sense you're being pulled under for the third time, and now you want to get out of the water. You said, I've had enough. Now your senses have returned, and you realize you're in a mess up to your neck. And you come crying on mommy's shoulder, mama, what, 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 you come on out of it? I can't, I'm too deep in it, I'm too involved now. There are too many feathers hanging on me now, I can't, mama, I can't, dad, I'm sorry. Then it just kills our heart to know that you're like that. Then you try to say, well, you trust the Lord, it's just this. It's not quite that simple now. Well, just ask God to forgive you. It's more than that, darling. It's more, it's more than that. To break in that bondage. It's more than God forgive me. It's more than coming to the altar. I believe God save me. It's more than that. Amen. Brother, there are some feathers that got to be cut from you. I don't care who you are. I don't care how strong your mind is. I don't care if you didn't go with that far. There's a bondage there. Oh, I didn't that. But, I to, yeah, I'm not, but I'm not going so far. If you go at all, you're going to get bound. If you go that far, you're going to get bound. You ain't got to go a thousand miles to get bound. Some, some people are shouting bound. He blinds you. Now you're unable to defend yourself, so he binds you. And that's a tough bondage. Brother, when you decide to quit, and then the devil comes against you, and you find that you are made captive to him by his, at his own will now. You say, devil, you look up, you in this domain, you say, devil, and you're trying to get out, trying to tip out, go back. Say, where, where, you think you're, where you think you're going? I'm going back to church. No, you're not. No, you're not. You get to the end of your little chain, and you come on back here. 
But devil, you told me that I, I didn't have to stay out here long. Yes, I told you. I mean, you know, I'm a liar from the beginning. That's my name. I'm a father of it. And so you fell for it. But heaven told you I was a liar a long time ago. I ain't got saved. I can't get saved, in fact. I'm still a liar. You didn't tell me we're like this devil. Well, let me tell you something, children. Can I tell you something? I don't care how much fun you think you're having. If you're on the bundle, you ain't right. You ain't happy. You ain't happy. You ain't, you ain't near happy. If you, you know what Patrick Henry one time said? Give me liberty or give me death. What? He said, I don't want to be on the bondage. I'd rather be dead. I'd rather be dead than to be in a situation where I don't have control of myself. Why I don't have my personal liberty to kill me. Give me liberty or give me death. I'll not be bound. I, being under bondage is too miserable. Some of you under bondage is your attitude. Can't stop getting mad. Been trying, to, been, been trying to stop getting mad for 20 years. Still get mad. Under bondage to your attitude. Under bondage to your lustful eyes. Still having all kind of old, uh, still undressing women as they walk down the street. Slave to your passions. Young man, not long ago, I had an occasion to preach, and they were there. I don't care to mention the details of the situation, then you'll know what I'm talking about. But I, God gave me an anointing. I preached on a certain occasion in another city, not long ago. And a young man who had been in the ministry, God was blessing him good, but he had lost out with God, and he got convicted. All of them got convicted at, at this occasion. And you know what happened? He was so sturdy, he went by his mother's house the next day. He said, Mama, he promised me, but I'll be to church. <laughs> I'll be to church. He said, Mama, listen. He said, I'm just bound by sex. Never had been in involved. But he messed around with it, and now he's bound. Oh, he must have a queen. I won't say what the woman looked like, but it's not, that's not the idea. It's not the idea. It's the fact of it. It's not what they look like. See, when you're bound by that spirit, anything will do. I want to tell you something. And let me tell you something. And marriage does not give deliverance from that spirit. When I'm over, I said, listen, if that boy got a spirit. Oh, well, what happened? Well, if he gets married, that'll stop. that won't solve nothing. That'll worsen it. So you go, don't you get nobody under uh, a lust spirit think you're going to marry him, they're going to solve it. That ain't going to solve a thing. I tell you that. You, you take it from me. Take my word for it. You better pray and you better pray hard. You better pray and you better pray hard. Once the devil, listen, read a little more of that. Let me show you something. Let's give a graphic description of what you're dealing with. Please. Promise them liberty. Listen, dear one, let me tell you something. And let me tell you something else that's far more serious than you think. To be under bondage to your appetite. That's just another phase of sensuality. And no sensuality is right. Listen, I've had people come here from other cities, come to the altar, crying. Say, Brother Frank, that's what they used to call me back in Detroit. I've had some visits. And they had confidence in me. I said, yes, what is it? They've been modest all their lives and unassuming and never went out of the world, never have been to a party perhaps. But they were, she said, I am bound by the spirit of obesity. In other words, I just can't stop eating. I just can't help it. And it's just destroying me. A sweet young lady with the power of God left here. Went out west. Stayed with the saints for years. Electrified the congregation with her fervent testimonies. And just in her waning days, when she was on her way out of here, she said, Brother Hampton, she says, I'm about out of here. Said, what happened? What happened? What happened? She said, listen. I am under bondage of my appetite. I just go out and I eat stuff, stuff myself. And I, I try to stop and I can't do a thing about it and I just lost out. Not because of a boyfriend. Not because of getting high with beavers and cocaine. But because of her appetite. And she couldn't stop it even though she saw it was destroying her. But at least she knew she was being destroyed. Some people that's destroyed don't even recognize it and left here, unsaved. And as far as I know, after 10 or 12 years, still unsaved. A friend of God 
shouldn't be under bondage to anything but Jesus. N absolutely anything. You shouldn't be able to take or leave anything. Do you understand that? Let me go on to the last aspect of this. He blinds you. Then he binds you. You might say, Brother Hampton, well, I'm not under bondage. Well, I'll tell you a good way of knowing. Try to get free. You can bind me up with all kinds of rules as long as, I, as long as I'm laying up there asleep. I'm satisfied. I don't know I'm bound until I try to get up and walk around. Wait a minute, I'm in trouble. A fella who had overcome every kind of illness, been almost burned up, shot several times, stabbed, but nothing could stop him. You, you, you're sitting the next day out there with bandages all on him, wounds bound up, whatever. He was unstoppable, as it were. But finally, he had a gun duel with a fella, and he developed cancer. Back in the 60s, I went uh, home and I saw him, and my mother wrote and told me that he was deteriorating. And one morning, the first time in his life, he tried to descend from his bed and he found that he couldn't get up. And that was too much. Tough man, he cried, I'm helpless. I'm hopelessly bound here. It's all over. He had never been in a predicament where he couldn't respond all his life. But now, here I am. Helpless. Many of you don't know your plight until you try to get free. One fellow said, or both, we spoke speaking about smoking. I can stop smoking any time I want to. And sometimes he did, several times a week. Stop and go and back again. And after a while, you realize you're in real trouble. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave it alone. I'm through with it. Oh. And you are deceived by your good intentions. But one day you see this thing is destroying your soul and your mind and your body. And now you really want to get free. Now you really want to come out of it. And now you put forth a desperate effort. And you walk away thinking you're free. But at the first smell of wind... Your knees weaken, and there you go again. Now you realize I have spent my very best effort, and I'm still here. I can't get out! Somebody help me. Let me out of here. And then we're still in the rope. And you know what you do? Take a knife and cut it off above your reach. I thought you wanted help. And we extended your rope, and you're going to cut it off above your reach? Don't you deceive yourself, think you can mess with sin, and whenever you're ready, you're going to just run out of it. Oh, it's so far different. You know what, dear one, you, you might ask me, Brother Hampton, what has been the greatest source of you staying saved? Because I feel if I mess myself, I just can't make it back. I think if I mess my mind up, I can't get my mind back right anymore. That's, 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 that's what kept me. I am afraid that I can't get my mind straight again. I actually feel that way. And if, and if I think in my heart, so am I. If I can't get my mind straight, I'd never get straight. Then the last aspect, the grinding, the grinding, the grinding effect, the grinding effect. You know what? They used to have those oxes treading out the corn. And they would go around and around and around with a great big heavy millstone. And they would grind out the corn. That's what they had Samson doing. Instead of the oxes, they had Samson doing it. And he just, with every ounce of his strength and every nerve in his body straining to push that big wheel. And they would lash him. Come on with it. He gets tired and similar. Come on with it. That's what it's all about. When Samson was playing with Delilah, oh, having fun, driving the woman, putting his head in the lion's mouth, you couldn't see quite that far. Yeah. 
We're going to get to the end of the story. We want to read a verse of scripture first. In Proverbs 13, 15, quickly. Let's move me on quickly. Proverbs 13, 15. We're going to close very briefly. God help us. 13, 15. Good understanding. Give it favor. The way of the transgress is hard. Don't you come tell me salvation is hard. You might have your mind so messed up it's hard now because you can't perceive it right. You might have let yourself so degenerate now that your resistance is down and yes, it's hard. <laughs> but it's not designed to be hard. The grace of God takes the hardness out of it. The way of the transgress is hard. Let me tell you something. It might be delightful when you're getting into it. But when you mess around and get to the illegitimate baby and you hope they were dead to get out of your way and you got them on your life, on your hand for the rest of their lives, that can be pretty hard. When you want to go out and do your thing but you can't go Come on, brother. Come on. and you're bound there, you got to stay with a home with a sick baby. Come on. Go around and try to borrow money to buy pampers for it. Amen. Wishing that you had aborted it. That's hard. And you got to sleep with that every night. There is no making up for that because it's abnormal. You don't make up for that. There's nothing you can do to, to bridge that gap. I don't care if I give mine, if I give me 11 children, I had $1,000 a week apiece. It wouldn't have satisfied me. What, because daddy wouldn't have been there to see after them. When they cry, I say, daddy, I'm there looking in the room. When they say, daddy, I'm hungry, I'm there to give them something. When they have a problem, daddy, I'm right there. A $10,000 a week wouldn't make up for that. Maybe I have no money to give them, but the fact that I'm there, I'm a dad. I did it right. I, nothing will give me consolation. And that's, that's hard. That'll be hard to live with. The way of the transgressor is hard. You understand it? Now you let the devil tell you salvation hard if you want to. Brother Hamlet is hard. <laughs> you are bewitched, deceived, and bewildered. If you're crying about salvation, and especially though you, who you've been in sin, you ought, to know, you ought to know how you were out there. But you forget about that. You forget that. You forget that you should remember. Remember that you should forget. And nothing can take the hardness out of it. I don't care how prosperous you are and what are you doing and, and where you live and, and, and your, your annual salary. Nothing can take the hardness out of the sin but salvation. Amen. Absolutely nothing. Believe, take my word for it. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 67. Wait a minute, we're going to end up on a good note. So hang with us, we're going to end up on a good note. Come on with it, Deuteronomy 28. What? In the morning thou shalt say, I wish God it was evening. My God wishing your time away. <laughs> Lord God, we wake up in the morning oh, another day. I wish it was evening. I wish it was time to go to bed so I can go to sleep and forget all this stuff. And what else? <laughs> and the evening shall I say, Oh, I wish it was morning so I could wake up fresh and new. Nothing satisfies you. When the evening comes, I just wish I sure wish it was morning. When morning comes, I wish it was evening. The day was almost over. I'm just tired of myself. I'm tired of struggling. I'm tired of life. My former pastor just died a couple of weeks ago in California at a big funeral. And in his last moment, he'd been trying, struggling for about a 10 or 12 years, trying to live with this sugar and this gangrene setting in on him. And he told the people next to his bed, listen, I am tired of fighting. I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of life under these circumstances. I don't care how much fun you think you have. You're going to get tired of life and sin. Yes, you are. It's because it's, 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 you're grinding. You are pushing hard. You're, you're kicking against the friction. You're pushing hard. It takes, it's hard to live in sin. Going against your conscience every day. Going against God every day. Going against grace every day. That's hard. What is our hope? I'm going to give it to you. And I trust God you won't cut the rope off above your reach. Turn back to our original text, please. Our original text. Judges 16. Verse number 28. Here it is. I'm not going to leave you without hope. 
Samson called unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord, remember me. I pray thee and strengthen me. I pray thee only this once, O oh God, that I may at once be avenged of my two eyes. What is your hope? A desperate cry. A desperate cry. Lord, I might not be able to leap and run no more. I might be able to preach no more. I might not be able to do the go no more meeting, but please give me one more shot at it. Even if it's my dying kick, let me know that you're with me one more time. I, be, I don't care if the building falls on me. I don't care if I'm covered with rubble. Just let me know one more time. Amen. Let me shout one more time. Let me glorify you once more. Let me feel your spirit surging through my being one more time. One more time. If I have to die for my foolishness, I don't care. Just let me sense your presence once more. Like I used to feel it. Brother, all right, I'm going to take you out of here, but I'm going to let you go. I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to, okay, come on. He's feeling, feeling big muscle. Try to lead me to the post. Ah! Go, go. Hallelujah. Don't be proud. Don't die and go to hell. Humble yourself. And that's God. And you meant to pray. God will help you. Amen. God will give you one more shot at it. God will give you one more time. God will give you one more time. No more. You lost all your threats. I don't care what you say. God told me to push. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. You know you're weak. You know you're limited. You got your hair cut Amen. and all your threats gone. Say what you want to say. Say what you want to say. I'm going to I'm going to ask God. Give me one more shot at it. Give me one more shot at it. One, get one more. I don't care if I die after this. I don't care if I run after this. I don't care what happened after this. Just give me one more shot. It's going to go. Hallelujah.
Lord, 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 my God, my God, hey, God, one more second, one more chance, my God, Lord, the spirit, Lord, the anointing, Lord, the power, hey, one more time, Lord, just one more, one more time, Lord, one more time, let me flex one more, help us, Holy Ghost, I got another step in the mess, I'm bound up out here, but one more time, I make good of it this time, Lord. I make good of it this time. I make good of it this time. I won't mess up no more. Amen. I kill me after this. I don't care. Do what you want to do after this. One more time. God will bargain with you. God will incline his ear. Amen. Amen. His ear not heavy that he can't hear. His eyes, my God, are not blind. They cannot see. God will bargain with you. God will bargain with you. God will deal with you this morning. Amen. Why are you in that frame of mind? Why you feel like you're feeling right now? God will deal with you. You might never get this feeling again. You might not feel like this anymore. You might not feel that push anymore. That urge anymore. God want to work with you this morning. I know he does. Now, the consequences for not responding is that you're going to get bound tighter. You'll get bound tighter. Then we can get our chain cutters and everything else won't help you. But right now, but right now I can sense it in the atmosphere. I can sense it. Amen. Let's get before God and pray that God break some of these bondages. Let's pray. Let everybody. Let God break some of these chains this morning. These people are bound tighter and you think we can't play with this thing. This might be it. This might be it. My God have mercy. Amen. 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 Let's go before God, children. This is a serious matter. My God have mercy. We bind the devil this morning. The blood of Christ frees men this morning. The blood of Christ frees men this morning. We bind the devil this morning. The loose here. Loose. The blood of Christ against you. The loose here. Loose this morning. My God, loose this morning. My God.